Crypto Against All Odds is one of the best themed tower defense games that I've seen and played in recent years. It takes cryptocurrency, it translates it into a tower defense game a la Plants vs Zombies and I'll explain that later and really runs with the idea of everything being about crypto and mining for stuff and being hacked and all of that kind of stuff. But underneath it is actually quite a decent tower defense game too. The reason why this game reminds me of Plants vs Zombies is because it's lane defense based. Almost every level sees you placed in a six lane area for you to defend all of those six lanes. Now initially you'll need to put down mines so that you can mine up all of the currency that you can then spend on your towers, but then as you go through building these towers you need to make sure that they're covering all of the lanes with a variety of different attacks and sometimes defences so that you can then stop enemies marching across these lanes and reaching the other side. As the enemies cross your path they'll either attack the towers and blow them up or they might be able to ghost through them depending on what the enemy type is and then if they reach the other side if they hit one two or three times you'll lose lives and then it's game over once you've hit three enemies getting across to the other side each level starts off quite slow and you kind of think oh where's this all going because it does drip feed a couple of enemies in but that's because you've got very little resources to start with because you have to mine your own currency to start with and that takes time to build up but very soon after i'd say the first six or seven levels crypto against all odds starts to pile on wave after wave of different enemies coming towards you they start to appear not necessarily at the beginning of paths, but halfway down them. And that's by noting that they've come through the back door, uh, just like real hacking does. And that's what I mean about this game being really well themed, because each cryptocurrency has its own tower or enemy. The way how you interact with um, different people to kick off a level is through like an email system and a forum, a bit like Reddit, um, where you can... Uh, pick up different jobs and then try and get one, two or three stars depending on what you're doing. Each level has potentially three stars for you to get. One for clearing the level, complete with um, out losing any lives, and then you'll get two kind of additional side missions as well. These often involve you needing to use the new towers or abilities that you've unlocked and probably surviving with a certain amount of either lives remaining or towers not being lost, that kind of thing. In addition to the towers that you have, you also gain specific um, like passive abilities like most tower defences do. Some of these are about laying down new mines so that you can then mine more currency to build more towers, but the more towers you start to build, the further forward you get, and so you actually have less time and less space to deal with um, all of the enemies coming towards you, which then puts your towers at risk. So you need to think about strategically where you place all of these towers, because some towers just shut down when an enemy comes near them. So you want those towards the back, but then they might not necessarily have the full range of being able to hit enemies right the way down the front of the queue. So you might want to place them in the middle somewhere and maybe put in a couple of shields beforehand. As you go through the game, the more options become available to you, the more strategies you can choose, and the game gets better the longer that you play. After about level 15 or so, the game then starts to get quite difficult. And that's because it starts to put in wave and wave and wave of enemy at you and starts to restrict the type of towers that you can bring into the game. So it means that it forces you to play with different strategies and different ideas rather than relying on the same old tried and tested formulas. There are a couple of mini-games here as well. There's a breakout level, randomly thrown in for no particular reason. There's also like a whack-a-mole level as well, where you get this lightning effect um, passive ability, but just unlimited spending on it. So you can just smash and like click a whack-a-mole to get rid of everything for a level as well. These break up some of the more traditional lane defense style games, but don't necessarily take it over. Um, and you can also use a kind of cryptocurrency minigame in the background to buy extra things for your uh, central main menu hub. It does feel all kind of aesthetically based, but it does let you do things like change the soundtrack in the background or reduce cooldowns for some of those effects that I was talking about earlier. 
if I had a couple of niggles about this game, they would be one, this game doesn't seem to be terribly well optimised for what is a tower defence game. My PC shouldn't be running so tirelessly to try and run it. <laughs> Secondly, the controls are a bit weird. So you can play this game with the mouse or the controller. The tower defence portion works way better on the mouse because you have the flexibility and fluidity of roving around and clicking everywhere, whereas the controller just feels more clunky and more nodule based and it's slower to play. However, whenever you hit a mini game like that um, Asteroids, uh, sorry, Breakout style level, the mouse didn't work very well at all and I switched to key, uh, controller and the controls were way, way, way better. And I was like, well, why is this a thing? Um, it just seemed a bit odd for me. This game reminds me very much of the Solitaire Conspiracy that was released by Mike Bithell last year. That took a very simple Solitaire game, put an excellent theming and design and artwork and music and just feel around it that elevated up a very simple game to a really great experience. And that's what Crypto Against All Odds has done with a lane defense styled game. Yes, it does take a while to get going, and no, you won't necessarily be challenged until about level 9 or 10 out of about the 25-ish levels that there are, but um, you'll enjoy your play as you go through because everything around it is shining bells and whistles and just looks the part. Written review will be over on highplanegames.com. Pleasantly surprised with this. Had a good time. Higher Plane Games is part of the Higher Plane Network, a completely independent media outlet supported by people like you. The goal is to create the best possible content that cultivates a richer indie scene for games as well as music and entertainment. To find out more and to get involved, visit patreon.com forward slash higher plane network. Your support makes all the difference and in return you'll gain access to bonus content and downloads. Thank you for watching.